What's up everyone? Welcome back to Sweet Bee TV. I'm your host Sienna Leone and today we're all pink for the pink carpet. We are in Hollywood for Paramount Plus's new TV series, Grease Rise of the Pink Ladies. Let's go catch up with the cast. So tell me, what are you feeling? What's going on? I feel really excited. Lots of little butterflies fluttering in my stomach right now, but I'm really excited for everybody to watch the first episode. I've seen it about a thousand times, so I'm feeling ready. Uh, I just feel ecstatic. It's kind of surreal. I probably won't process it for another two months, but right now I feel great. So excited for everyone who's fans of the original Grease to see what we've made here. It really is a beautiful little universe that we've created, a little extension of the original IP, and I think people are really going to enjoy it. I'm feeling pretty pink. Pretty, very, very pink. By the way, this is just about the coolest mic I think I've ever seen. Did you hear that? <laughs> Always set up well. Did you get to keep anything from the amazing outfits on this show? I did not get to keep the cheaper jacket, but I think that's in hopes that we will have more stories to tell in the future, so I'm okay with it. But um, I did, I think I stole a little wrench because the T-Bird car is my car, and that was kind of my thing, and I was always flipping a wrench, and I think I snuck one out the back door. Paramount, did you hear that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm honestly one bad joke away from getting fired, so please. I did not. A lot of the clothes were actually, they're 70 years old. They're from the 1950s, so we had to be really delicate with the clothes, and they actually were, you know, very precious. Uh, but I definitely took home the style with me, and I dress a lot more 1950s nowadays with a 2020s twist. You know, when I was watching this, you guys paid such amazing tribute to Greece, and I picked up on the first few episodes some little Easter eggs that are that are planted. So, without giving too much away, what do you want everyone at home to be keeping their eyes peeled for in this one? Oh, I think like especially as the season unfolds, you'll see a lot more heavy nods to the original. Lots of Easter eggs for fans of the original. Just be ready that there are some things that are really obvious and some things that are really subtle. And like the original movie, there's always created really big tableaus and there's always something going on in the background. So you got your main actors in the front, the next, and then next. So just watch all the little trinkets throughout the backgrounds. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I wish I could tell you every little thing. And I honestly, there's so much that I feel like I've missed already in watching it. Um, I, I would say pause frequently and look for costuming, look for lines, um, and, and look for some characters. And you'll, and you'll, I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised. All right. Honestly, what I want fans to do is just enjoy the show and have a good time because we had such an amazing experience creating it that I hope that people who watch it can just get a sliver of the fun that we had making it. I'm sure they will. So that's what I want people to, to take away from the show. I would just say you got to dive in April 6th. First two episodes are released. You cannot miss it. I think just keep an eye out because there are line nods, there are costume nods, there are song nods, and that just comes from our our two leaders, this one, Alethea and Annabelle, being super fans of Greece. And so all of it, there was a few things as a cast that I'm not allowed to say, but we would find it would be like, was that on purpose? Like, that's like a nod of the show, right? She'd be like, you bet you it is. So if you keep your eyes peeled, you'll find something. So I wasn't crazy. I was like, Wait a second. So much every episode is named after a line from Greece. Wow. Yeah. That's a cool one to know. Okay. Now you are bringing Kitty to life in this. So tell me a little bit about your character. Gil is uh, one of the founding members of the T-Bird. So he's suave and cool and smooth and fast talking, but he's also kind of a pain in the ass. Um, and he's also cheeky and a big prankster and kind of always looking for trouble. So it's just so fun to play and requires quite a bit of coffee in the morning. Buddy is the golden boy of Rydell High. He's the quarterback. He's the, the reigning uh, student president. He has this big, beautiful heart, but he makes a lot of mistakes uh, along the way. He's a product a little bit of the 50s and of what his dad wants him to be and what his friends around him want him to be. And so the heart's a little bit hidden at first. And as the series goes on, he has these wonderful influ influences of the pink ladies and the other people around him. And he has to decide if he wants to say the same person he is or if he wants to, to grow and show that big, beautiful heart that he has. So I'm excited for people to see it. I'm excited for them to see someone who uh, maybe looks and acts a little bit different than the expectation, and I'm excited for the song and dance. Kitty Facciano is the mother of Jane and Francesca, Fran, and she is... She's balancing this life, moving to Rydell and 
doing something new and needing to think that she's assimilating and normalizing to this city, but also being Latina, which is something that was very important to me to represent. Neil is just a person who you love to hate. You know, every show needs that, and I'm so happy to be the hateable character in this show. I'm really looking forward to it. She is bringing a lot of attitude, I'll tell you that. Yeah, she is a little devious, vain, insincere woman, and I love her. We all love that. Yeah. Sometimes we it's fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 31 original new songs. So that being said, do you have a favorite? I know that's a loaded question. Oh, it is such a loaded question. <laughs> Jason Schmidt's uh, Take the Wheel is an amazing song. Oh my god, every song is that's 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 an unfair question. Every okay. song is amazing. Face to face is the Bob. Land doesn't look so bad in episode in episode eight with Maxwell who plays Wally is my my favorite song in the show. I just think there's a spectrum of like the three genre and what our genre is, and that one hits dead in the middle, and I just love it. Now in the junket yesterday, we talked about that representation you're bringing to the screen. So this is a big, big honor. So. Just speak a little bit about that for me. Yeah, I mean, when I was younger, I didn't really have much access to queer representation in the media, especially, specifically, butch lesbians. It's really not something that's super common. And, uh, I mean, I grew up watching um, Orange is the New Black, which was not the most age-appropriate source material. Um, but but now, to be able to uh, share my queerness with the world um, and with young people and share with them that it's okay to be yourself is just really, really special. You gave me a really good sound bite in our junket yesterday when I asked about the outcasts and that message for them you said stay weird or oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> let your weird out let your let weird out. out what can you say on that for the outcasts watching let your weird out yeah. expand on that um yeah i mean i think the whole uh, one of the main messages of the show is that you really should be who you are and not who you're supposed to be so let your weird out be weird as like a pretty weird kid myself like I didn't find confidence until I just accepted that I was a little bit strange. So you'll be happier and you'll find a lot more success. That being said, go let your weird out on this yeah. pink carpet tonight. Yes, thank you so nice much. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you.